I want to show you how the iron carbon phase diagram can be used to predict the phases that will form um, if the sample is allowed to slowly cool. So you know that um, we have on this axis is temperature, this axis is weight percent carbon, and oftentimes if you see something written down such as, you know, it's um, iron uh, 0.4% carbon, that is the default is that that is a weight percent. So here's the weight percent on this axis, and just by way of review, we know that these regions uh, tell us the, the boundaries of essentially solubility of this component inside uh, this, this component. So here what we have is we have 100% iron, 100% iron here, and we're adding carbon to it. And what we know is that in for iron to be, uh, for example, in the alpha phase, we can't add more than 0.2% carbon before the iron starts to, starts to precipitate out. Well, let's look at how you might uh, determine in a two-phase region how much you have of each phase. So I'm going to pretend like we have a 1% uh, uh, iron with a 1% carbon uh, alloy. And let's consider what happens to this thing as it cools. So the, uh, the composition is 1% carbon. So overall, we know that we're not going to lose any carbon or iron as we go. What's going to happen is it's just going to be redistributed in different phases. So we start out at some high temperature. And as this begins to cool, you can see we're in the 100% liquid phase. And as we cool this down, we enter into this phase region that's labeled gamma plus liquid. So what that tells us is basically as we cross this line, what happens is the liquid begins to precipitate out of the liquid a gamma phase. And that continues on can, and continues on until you hit this line right here. And this line brings you into the gamma phase. So we know that the solidification process um, from liquid to gamma is complete when we get down to this temperature. Now the gamma continues to cool and we go through no other phase regions. So we know that we just have gamma by itself until we get to this temperature to here. At this temperature, we cross the boundary into the gamma plus carbide phase region. So we know we started with gamma and then as we enter into this phase region, we're getting a transformation like this. Gamma is forming uh, Fe3C. Not entirely, but here's the carbide. That's that's this line here, just as a reminder. It's uh, 25 atomic percent carbon. So uh, as you enter this region, you um, get more carbide that forms. Now, so there's something odd that happens right at this horizontal line. Now, unfortunately, because of these lines in the background, the grid, you can't see that there's actually a horizontal line right at 727 degrees Celsius that runs all the way across here. Now what is that? This is actually the, a, any of these horizontal lines and you can see one up here like this. You can see there's another one on this phase diagram if you can find it. Um, well it's there whether or not you can find it. Uh, this is uh, called an isothermal transformation and this is a transformation that takes place at, w at one temperature. So ISO the same temp the same heat, same temperature. So what we have is at, at this temperature we we've we're, we've cooled it down to this uh, point, and what we have is a mixture according to this phase region label. We have a mixture of gamma and carbide. Now what happens when we get on the other side? You see that we are in a mixture of alpha plus carbide. Well, um, that seems to suggest that all the gamma has converted into alpha and maybe carbide. So it turns out that is true that at this temperature, there is a, um, a, a reaction where gamma, um, gamma is converted to alpha plus Fe3C. And this particular reaction, you'll notice, involves uh, where these involve two phases, liquid going to gamma, 
gamma going to Fe3C. This one involves three phases, gamma going to alpha plus Fe3C, and that is uh, one of the reasons why it takes place all at one temperature. Now there are other, uh, as I mentioned, horizontal transformations here on this graph, and you'll kind of recognize them by this characteristic shape. There's a horizontal line, and then you see this valley going into this line. You've got the same thing going on here. There's a valley going into this line. I can extend it across here. And as I said, there's another transformation like this. It's actually a, not the exact same one, but you'll see something characteristic, a horizontal line and some sort of valley, whether it's a, a, above or, or below. Um, and what that's telling us is it's telling us the transformation involves all of the single phase regions that the transformation touches as a boundary. Okay, what the heck did I mean by that? Okay, let, let's talk about that. Um, this, let's, let's look at this valley here, and then where does it extend? It touches this alpha phase, it touches the gamma phase. What is touching this line? The, the gamma phase bounds this line and touches right at this V. The alpha phase touches here, and the Fe3 phase touches there. So this actually reveals one of the secrets of the phase diagram, and that is when you're in a, a two-phase or a three-phase situation, the, the, the places where an isothermal line touches a single phase will tell you the composition of that equilibrium phase. Now I'll do it up here in a, a simpler example. So here we're in a two-phase region, gamma plus liquid. Let's say we're concerned about what we have going on at 1400 degrees C. Well, as you can see, this thing called a tie line collides with the liquid phase here and collides with the gamma phase um, here. So what this tells you is if we go, remember that this x-axis is the weight percent carbon. So if we go directly straight down to the weight percent carbon where it collides with the liquid phase, it's about two weight percent carbon. What this tells us is that we have liquid w with a composition of iron two percent carbon. What is the composition of the gamma? Well, that is the intersection point here. We go straight down here all the way to the bottom, and that tells us that we have roughly um, 0 0.8 percent carbon, and that is the gamma composition. So what we've seen here is that this horizontal, this isothermal tie line uh, indicates for us the composition of the single phases by where it runs into these single phase regions. Okay, let's, let's try that again. Let's try a different uh, 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 sample. Um, here we're in a single phase region. Now down here we're in a two phase region. Let's do a temperature going f r roughly from here. I'll try to draw a horizontal line. I just uh, probably be terrible at it. So here's our horizontal line, and we're in this two phase region. What are the two phases? Well, the phases are gamma and carbide. What is our original composition? That's this n this value right here, one percent carbon. And what is the composition of gamma that's in equilibrium? Well, it's given by this intersection point here. We go straight down, something like 0.8 percent um, carbon. What is the equilibrium composition of carbide? Once again, it's where it collides into this phase region, which is really more like a vertical line. And you go directly down.